What's up? Where are you coming out of? I am out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And we actually were in BC, British Columbia for a little bit. And, and okay. we did a shift and now we're in Calgary. But yeah, we're we're up north from where you, you're at right now. Yeah, we're we're here in Kansas City. I just I I gotta tell you, I just love the way the Canadians roll. All the musicians I interview get grants from the government. So when your government says we hold the heart arts in high esteem and they give out grants, they mean it. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the idea of socialized health care. Anytime a calamity happens in America, the Canadians are the first ones to pass legislation, you know, like with guns and things like that. I know it's not a utopia, but there's just a way, there's a general vibe that I just I, I like. I gravitate towards the Canadian culture. There's a lot of cool stuff here. You know, like I, I really can't complain. I know there's some talks where my wife and I were, were trying to decide if we would travel and, and, and leave Canada or, or go other places. And honestly, it has everything we need right here. So I don't really see a need for us to just up and uproot our entire family and, and go anywhere else in the world right now. But, you know, what's cool is from where we live, it's like what? From where we used to live, it was like a ferry ride. To, yeah. to really get to, to to Seattle and stuff like that too. So U.S. is right there. Canada's right there. We're close by either way. So we can always collab and do some cool stuff as well. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, it's great to meet you. And I want to dive in first and foremost in our conversation by asking, how did you survive the last three and a half years or so living through a pandemic? How did you get through it? And how did it change you? Um, Pandemic was, was pivotal, I would say, to my life and, and our family, right? Um one of the big things was my my first business that I started and I grew from when I was 16 was actually a health and fitness studio. So, you know, if if anybody has been in that space and, and they went through the pandemic, you know, that entire industry got shut down, right? Like anything was a physical based business. It was rough. It was really challenging. Um, what was really interesting is, though, because I built that business and I was growing it over 10 years, I, I really realized I had a lot of skills and abilities that would have benefited a lot of local based businesses and uh, businesses around the world when it came to time management and productivity and streamlining how they would grow. So what was so interesting is even though the pandemic forced me to slow down and pause on my physical based business, it actually created an opportunity for me to work 100% remote, um, which allowed me to actually be home for my daughter being born. It allowed me to actually be present. Um, spend more time with my wife. It allowed us to travel across the country. Um, and it really allowed me to help more people than I even really imagined. So it's kind of it's kind of weird how this happened. Like the pandemic is bittersweet. Like one side of it, it, it forced me to stop something that I really built when I was young and loved and, and, and was like, this is what I'm going to do forever. Um, but then it created another opportunity for me to help more people and, and and have more time for myself and have more time for my family. So really interesting. Like it's... Yeah where we're at now it's kind of we're kind of like coming out of this this fear and and this isolation you know for the pandemic um and i think for me it's kind of creating a really good opportunity to connect with more people and, and hear their stories and see if we can we can connect in some some way or somehow yeah so you're kind of a guru of helping businesses grow, manage their time. But if we wanted to simplify this in any way, shape, or form, if I put you in front of a bunch of third graders, it's career day, and one of the kids asks you, what do you do for a living? How would you answer that child? I'm a coach. Okay. I coach people to make their time better, um, and I help business people make more money. Like That's, that's kind of like how I simplify everything. Yeah. You know, I had a client who basically booked one of their office hour calls with me earlier today. And the message they just said is, I, I want to catch up. We actually revamped their entire business in the last year um, and really structured how they were managing their time a lot better. So if I'm talking to anybody who's like, who are you? What do you do? I'm like, I'm a coach. I've been coaching since I was 16, realistically. But now I'm actually coaching people and managing their time so they can experience their business better and make more money so they're not struggling. Like, that's kind of, that's kind of yeah. the big thing. Right on. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? What was crazy is I wanted to be a coach, um, okay. which is so interesting. It, I, I think back to um, over here, I, I forgot what they call it, but they had like this little test that you would do back in the day where you would kind of see what your rankings are and they'll yeah. give you like the top five um, pro professional yeah. uh, uh, professions you can get into. And I think one of them was a stuntman. That was one. Uh, <laughs> the other one was like a police officer. 
Then another one that came up was a fitness professional. Um, and I can't remember, I can't, it's uh, probably one was either like, like a consultant or something along the lines like that, which is kind of crazy because I actually ended up doing most of those things. So wow. I ended up coaching people for most of my life while I was in high school, um, coaching teachers for like health and fitness and, and all that stuff. And um, then also from there, kind of thinking of being a fitness professional and, and growing that business out and, you know, now doing business consulting, it's, it's, it's literally what I wanted to do from when I was younger. Like, like really. So talk to me about where you were born and raised and how these seeds, obviously, if you want to be a coach, you want to help people. How did these seeds become who you are and your passion in your life? That's a great question. Um, I think from a very early age, I was always involved in sort of athletics or movement or like some sort of like personal development without even really realizing I was around personal development stuff. You know, I remember going to events with like my family and my father, you know, and, and like, you know, seeing speakers and, you know, being inspired by these people when I'm like young and I'm like, like, who, who are these people? Like, you know, didn't know they were dignitaries at the time because I was so little, but like, they're like professionals and, you know, prime ministers, people in parliament. And I'm like, like, who are these people? Like, I didn't, I didn't really understand. Um, and then as time went on, you know, I, I started going into like different networking things when I was really young, like 14, I remember being like the youngest person in the room. Everyone's like 40 and I'm in there with my suit and it's too baggy for me and stuff. Um, and I'm trying to understand how to network and how to build contacts and how to get people to respect me. And I was super young. So, you know, I think having all of that experience and also being athletic from very young, you know, from doing track and, you know, I wasn't actually that fast when I was really young I was I was more like strong so I was doing shot put and discus and all of those things that I learned from coaching and athletics and connecting with people translated to to me having this foundation of knowing you need to connect with people to build really great relationships knowing that um, health is important not just physical health but mental health spiritual health all these things are actually important because if, if these things go down you're going to go down with it right so um from a very young age, I kind of was really exposed to that. And I think I had, a, had a hunger to really be self-reliant at the same time. Like I didn't, I didn't want to subscribe to what everyone else was doing. I wanted to build my own brand, build my own business um, and make my own money so I could have this freedom to be here and, and talk and connect with people and not feel pressured. Like I, oh, I, I got to leave right now. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So as we mentioned, you know, I have this dual reality here of podcasting where I have jazz and then I have high end professionals like you, but you have this jazz history that we've kind of touched on a little bit. Talk yeah. to me about your love of jazz. Oh, man. Um, jazz, soul, funk. Those are my my sweet spots. Um I love like 70s type music, 70s style music. I'm thinking I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna see who I could pull in here. Um not really jazz, but more funk. Curtis Mayfield is probably one of my favorite artists yeah. of all yeah. time. Um besides that, you know, I think of Miles Davis, you know, and and just kind of hearing the instruments flow and what I'd even mention here is like my background before I even got into all of these stuff was in in poetry and spoken word and things like that too. So, you know, I, I love the sound of music and the flow and the creativity of that. And um, it, it really is beautiful because you can take something from nothing yeah, and, and really transform someone's entire experience. Yeah. Um, that's what I love about jazz. And that's what I love about music. And, I used to play the trumpet back in the day. I swear, like I have like a mouthpiece somewhere, <laughs> you know? Um, and I'm like, I get like this itching, be like, oh man, you know, I might, I might pick it up and, and start fiddling around with it for a bit. But yeah, no, I, I, music is an integral part that I think can really bring peace to anybody yeah. who, seeking, seeking it as well. I agree. It's the language we all understand, man. You know? Yeah. Um, so who's been a hero for you in your life? Oh man, it's been so many. Um, definitely my parents. I think my, my own, I think of, of my mom's ability to just grind and, and produce, you know, that's kind of one thing. And my dad's ability to connect and network with people. I've seen that from a very young age. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to give actual someone over here in Canada, shout out Michael Clemens, pinball Clemens. 
a Canadian football player who got massive, became a big coach and he'd done a lot of amazing stuff. When I was really young, I remember actually meeting him uh, for the Toronto Argonauts uh, Foundation and Toronto Argonauts. Um, and he really kind of helped push me to think about community, you know, start like really start thinking about how is your brand? How are you going to build your brand? And he was always motivational and, and inspiring people. And I remember from a very young age, seeing that when I was like 13, 14, 15 and watching him on TV and then physically meeting him in person and then shaking his hand and then him remembering me as I got older and him giving me a big hug. And he's like, Oh, you got so much bigger. Like all of these things, I, I think, think back now. And um, all of these people really helped shape me to who I am today. And, and I, I would say, um, I know I could not have done any of these things without my, my family and, and these people around me as well too. So yeah, yeah. The, the top three, I would say right now. Right on. So if you can meet anybody alive on the planet that inspires you, who would you love to meet and talk to? Hmm. Ooh, only one. You could, you could, we could have a, we could have a dinner party. <sighs> it's funny right now there there's kind of like a, everyone's talking on social media a lot of people are talking about social media about this um having a dinner with jay-z you're taking five hundred thousand. i don't know if you've seen that stuff come up yeah yeah uh, i have you know and and funny he actually said he would take the five hundred thousand because all my stuff's in my records so you don't really need to go <laughs> yeah. you know but i would i would love to have a conversation with with jay-z or nas probably both that'd be I, actually i would love to talk to both of them um yeah. And then if I were to step out of the entertainment industry, oh, what would be really interesting? I never even thought of having a conversation with, with Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right. Like I would love to hear what role his mother and father played in his life and how that kind of shaped him into what he's doing today. Yeah. Um, cause everyone talks about him, but I remember if, if, if you watch that movie that recently came out when I came out a little while ago about, you know, Nike and, and, you know, all that stuff, he kind of, kind of didn't even showcase Michael It showcased his mother, Yeah, you know? Um, so I would love to kind of hear that. And those are probably my top three. I'd probably put Beyonce on the list just cause my wife. So I would, I would definitely put Beyonce on there. Besides the fact of her being super smart and doing some really cool stuff, I know my wife would want to be in that room too. So I'd have to make sure that happens. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. When I was watching The Last Dance about Jordan, he specifically said everybody was signing with Converse at the time. It was the company. Magic Johnson, all of those guys were doing that. So when Nike called up, he immediately said no. And his yep. mom said, you're going to get on the plane <laughs> yep. and you're going to go to the meeting. Like. Yep. The, from the tone I got from him, those two were really kind of taking their wisdom and saying, just try it. They were the real, let's try it, people. And, yep. you know, he got cut from his high school basketball team. You know, there were a lot of things about him, I think, that his parents kept his mind going and and kept that legendary status moving. So it's yeah. interesting. It, it, you don't really realize the impact the people closest to you have in your life until like later on. I yeah. think that's what I've noticed, you know, where, you know, I look back like 10, 20 years ago and I'm like, wow, I remember that conversation I had with this person, you know, and you know, it'd be your mom, your brother, your sister, your aunt, it could be anybody. And you're like, that one conversation changed everything I'm doing today, yeah. you know? For sure. Yeah. So speaking of being inspired and motivated, every day you wake up, what is your inspiration? You're 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 not just working regular a regular job. You're helping people and you have to give. What is that for you? What makes you do that? Um realizing the impact burnout can have in the life of a business owner. Um before the pandemic, I got really sick. Like I ended up in the hospital sick um, because I didn't understand how to unplug. And I think that experience really shifted how I worked and really shifted how I had my relationship with work. And it, it kind of allowed me to give people other insights. Like every client that we have inside of Re Reboot X Academy, every, every client that I have that's working with me personally, I, I kind of talk to them about 
this one activity I did way back in the day, you know, the five things, what do you want? You know, what do you want right now? And, 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 and the more you ask that question, you ask that question every day, you get clarity as to what you really should be focusing on. Um, and I think I went through being burnt out, not being able to work, not being able to serve others. And that negatively impacted me, but then it created an opportunity for me to prevent that from happening to somebody else. So I think that's kind of what wakes me up. You know, I think about that dad who wants to be able to spend time with their children, but they're working like 60 hours. You know, uh, I think about that, you know, that mom who is burnt out, sleepless because they're stressing over bills because they haven't figured out how to actually monetize their skill set better, you know, or scale up their business faster. You know, I think about um, the younger version of myself who wish they had somebody to to mentor and guide them. Um, and they were seeking from YouTube and blog articles and whatever they could find, scrolling through social media, hoping to get like a little tip and a boost. Um, that's what really, really kind of makes me say this is worth it. Um, and I'll tell a quick story. There was one of our clients who she signed up with us in February and we had a call last week and she's like, it's crazy to think of how far we've come in less than a year. My business is about to surpass six figures. Like the amount that I'm earning now is less than a year. I didn't even think this was possible. Yeah. Right. She's like purchasing tickets for a family to go to Disneyland. You know, like all of these things are experiences that were not even a reality in January. Right. So those are the things that kind of make me be like, all right, you know, let's, let's go make some content. Let's go do a few calls. I, I know after ours, I'm, I'm going to go talk to someone else and see if I can help them out. Who's been struggling with, with kind of staying focused with their brand and their business. But that, that gets me fired up pretty much every day. So of all of the things that you've done professionally, what are you the proudest of? Professionally. Yeah. Launching a completely remote business and still living my life. Yeah. That to me is the greatest experience. I have the ability to wake up, drop my children off at daycare, come back, work go pick my wife up pick them up come back work in between there still do sales calls help people and still know that i'm literally transforming someone else's life yeah. and then also at the same time still being present in my life um that is the greatest accomplishment i would say i've accomplished in like my 16 years of building brands and businesses so far and you and you managed to tie both personal and professional in there, which is awesome. You know, all of it together is one. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into, say, the senior and high school version of you, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained up to this point in your life. What advice would you give your younger self? Hmm. People. Are waiting for you to speak. People are willing to invest in you because you can help them. Whatever is in your mind right now, start selling it. Don't don't look at anyone else. Just literally start selling what's in your mind, and then hire your friends. Help someone else. Yeah. And then keep doing that. Like, that's all you need to do. Crazy thing is that's what I'm doing now. And if I did this 14 years ago. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? A dreamer. Uh an artist, creative, someone who loves deeply, um, someone who sees a simpler, more refined world, um, 
someone who actually wants happiness and wants everyone to experience that level of happiness every day. Yeah. Perfect. So let me ask you this. If you could see any event, whether it's a sporting, let's just do that. If you could see any sporting event with your own eyes in the history of sports, where would you go? What would you love to have seen? I don't remember what performance it was, but it would have been Michael Jackson's Super Bowl performance. Yeah. Right? I would love the one that like, that if you just Google and YouTube that, like I would, <laughs> yeah. I would have wanted, I would want to actually be right there and see that. Yeah. Because I think it would allow me to think differently about performance and showmanship. Yeah. And artistry and creativity and how you can elevate that experience for somebody. That's what I'd really love to have seen with my own eyes. That's a great answer. My my dad was a car dealer in the 80s. And he won tickets to the victory tour when he hooked up with his brothers in 85. And I went to Arrowhead Stadium and saw it. And it, it took a little while. It was all kind of like, and it was probably a part of their whole shtick. But I still remember that glove coming up out of the ground. And there was a huge spotlight. And just all of that glitter was going around. And people were fainting. It was like the Beatles, man. It was wild. <laughs> See, that type of experience, like, it makes you think about the people you're serving. That's what I think. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, how can I create that experience in my arena? Yeah. Like, that's what I think of. Like, I, every time I go outside, I'm like analyzing things and I'm like, what can I take from here and elevate what I do? Yeah. And elevate an experience for a client or a customer or a friend or a loved one every day and myself. Yeah. Man, well said. Well said. I'm so glad that example came up. So, hey, if anybody wants to reach out, hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where can they go? Yeah, so you can go to RebootX.com. That is our official website for RebootX Academy. You'll find everything on there from how to book a call if you want to connect with me and have a deep dive conversation about where you're at with your business or your life. Uh, there's also details on you could grab a copy of my book. But if you want to get the official book, you can go to MyPurposefulWorkWeek.com and has everything there. So either RebootX.com officially, all stuff for me and RebootX Academy or grab a copy of my purpose will work week. You can grab that at my purpose will work week .com, So love it, man. Cool. This has been great, man. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for your story. You got a lot of good energy, man. Keep doing the good work. You're, you're doing a blessing over here too. So I, I appreciate you having me on and, and thank you for your time today. Yes, sir, man.